So here we are in the decaying under rot beneath Uldir. This is the dungeon that led into Uldir. Hey, uh, instead of doing the quest, Shinzai, perhaps I should just read the quest dialogues? Deep within the swamps of Nazmir, a blight grows beneath the surface. Unless this corruption is purged immediately, its influence will spread across the land like a ravenous plague, leaving behind nothing but a festering world. It's basically a titan version of the f***ing Lich King. The war within can't come sooner and I can't f***ing wait for all the new lore. Yeah, when you think about this actually being more of like a f***ing old god titanic experiment version of the Lich King, it's kind of like, what the f***? It's kind of messed up. Everything gets pulled under Gahoon's thrall is rotten corruption, spreads across the world, becoming part of the hive mind. Uh, okay. That doesn't sound nice. We find a damaged core. Deactivated Titan Keeper. Awakened. That's what we're doing. We're looking for Titan Keeper Hezril, who is the primary, one of the primary keepers for this Titanic uh, installation. There's something nearby you should look into. You've got the time anyway. Those goblins aren't ready yet. There's a statue nearby. Only it's not a statue to the trained Tortolani. It's a deactivated Titan Keeper. Noises have been coming from that thing ever since you helped Kragwa. It must be trying to reactivate itself. I bet that Titan-looking amulet of yours could help restart it. We'd be unstoppable against the trolls with the Titan Keeper's help. So go see if you can restart this Titan. So we use the power of Azerite to awaken this deactivated Titan Keeper. <laughs> nice. So... Core detected. Appreciation for retrieval. Your aid is required. We must begin. It's very mechanical, this Titan Keeper Hezrel. How to repair a Titan Keeper. Keeper Shavras' core and Keeper Bulkin's core. You get from fallen Titan Keepers at Nazwatha. Major system repair possible within nearby structure. Preliminary goal. Repair auxiliary systems. Scans detect three fallen Titan Keepers. Recover cores. Titan Keeper Hezreal able to retrieve data from cores. Titan Keeper Hezreal goal. Reboot auxiliary systems. Reach nearby structure. Restore all primary systems. Seal corruption. Result. Corruption contained. Titan Keeper Hezreal able to aid against blood trolls. Blood troll definition not found in databanks. That's interesting. Insert data cores. Cores recovered. Data validation and merge will begin shortly. Blood trolls were stricken from the records. <laughs> they hit it. They did not include it in their records. You fuckers. These mother fuckers. What does that mean? It means they kept blood trolls in essence, the thing that the, that the trolls were before they became Zandalari, before they ascended into their golden city under the leadership of King Dazar. Blood trolls are not, they're stricken from the record. That's what that means. By the way, did we consider the three seals to be fractals of Azeroth's prison? Of course. Sure. Recovering remnants. Scan of the area indicates roaming spirits clad in armor plating. And these are the, the wraiths that I was talking about earlier, these things. Purpose, defense of structure, animated by corruption. Detecting remnants of Titan plating within Spirit's armor. Request, recover remnants. Titan Keeper Hezreal is capable of breaking down Titan plating to reforge into weapons against forces drawn by corruption. So this Titan plating... <laughs> they say it's reanimated with the Spirit's power, but if you ask me, that's exactly what this Titan plating was made for. Users of sacrificial magics not allowed in my ordered realm. Not To be fair, not to defend the titans, but sacrificial magics also very messed up. Yeah, so you basically are saying that the origins of humanity and mankind is messed up. Can you reconcile that with your own existence? It doesn't mean that you have to think that it's okay, but knowing what you came from is probably pretty important. I think that being uh, hidden from you is, you know, that you deserve to understand your origins. Now let's do the Underrot. The blood trolls are scattered, but we must find Fucking a tool Nazman, not Amon Thule or anything? I know. Guard I know. Yourselves. Who knows what lurks in these caves? Devout blood priest. Fanatical headhunter. 
Blood Trolls are interesting. They have a little bit pointier, a little bit more like kind of monstrous kind of looking like, I guess, toes and feet. It actually reminds me a little bit more of the Kiraji. They're very, they tend to typically be similar build as standard trolls. Dark eyes, blackened eyes. And what we learn through the quests in Zuldazar is that the blood trolls, at least perhaps their old version before maybe the corruption of Gahoon became a thing, the, the old ways of the blood is how the trolls used to operate. This is more in line, actually, with the traditional ways of the trolls than what the trolls that were influenced by the titans do now. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go through this. Natural does not always mean better, <laughs> but it's something that, you know, you have to consider. As we go down through here, you know, they're doing like voodoo masks and stuff and cast dark omens. See, this really isn't very much different, if different at all, from what we saw in Atal Dazar. Remember? The fact that they have kind of like a little well of red blood energy down here is really similar to kind of what we found as the gold energy in the pools in Atal Dazar. Now, down here they do some pretty f***ed up shit, like hanging bodies upside down from the cliffs, so that, there's that. But you can see that this entire place underneath Uldir is just rotting away. That kind of the decay associated with what's occurring here is kind of eating away at the land, and you can even see that even though we're down underground now, that the facility of Uldir is still kind of going pretty deep into the ground there now. We can also see that these kind of like almost like almost like neural network looking pathways of mycelian uh, uh, mycelian uh, uh, organisms is kind of forming into a column that comes down and kind of continues spreading. So the capacity for kind of that hive mind connection between uh, mushrooms and or other forms of life or animals is extremely high um, and something that was also pointed out in the Zaxxus video that we watched the other day. So let's look at our first boss here. Elder Liax Liaxa. A devout worshipper of Gahoon, Elder Liaxa seeks the, to further the spread of rot through ritualistic blood sacrifices. So, <laughs> silly pyro, that's not blood, it's strawberry jam. So we're gonna we're gonna attack this thing. Time for a sacrifice. Goons, oh, I take you. Sanguine feast. Rotten widow. Goon be everywhere. My blood for Goon. Some loot. I remember when I caught the Tana Gahuna, it was very annoying. Had to apply this cream for three times a day. <laughs> so as we continue down here, we're seeing not only mushrooms and decay and mycelian influence, but we're seeing bioluminescence. Very, very common among the uh, spores and mushrooms and things like that in this game. Bioluminescence is very, very common. We see it in the Emerald Dream a lot as well, actually. Living rot. Basically fucking crawling around down here, which is just awful. And here we come to a, a large cave that is also kind of carved out by this rot. Feral blood swarmers, diseased lashers, and all the other myriad forms of corrupted life. Kragmaw the Infested is infested with plague, carrying parasites. This beast's only desire is to escape the caves where it can spread Gahoon's infection throughout the world. Infested, indigestion, charge, tantrum. This boss is f***ing disgusting. I think rot and decay magic in this form almost seems like more of a perversion of death magic than death magic. You know? It charges through and these f***ing nasty parasites come out of it. These little f***ing blood f***ing ticks, dude. They're so disgusting. Look at this. And they f***ing infect you and they implant 
inside of you and fucking grow the infection, dude. It's fucking disgusting. Tastes like chicken, though. Disgusting. Got ticks all over its body. Ugh. They're so gross. We also notice that there are skeletons and remains of extremely large dinosaurs down here. Um. Some of which have, like, horns growing out of their fucking eyes and shit due to these mushrooms. It's kind of gross looking. But the remains of pretty large beings just kind of, like, thrown down here. Or built on top of, or just kind of lost beneath the earth. The second he dies, the ticks abort ship. They abandon ship, and they need to go find a new host. Remember the first Mythic Plus affix of BFA? It caused little gahoonies to spawn out of mobs, and if they reached another mob, they'd infect them and multiply. Yup. Yep. They're blood ticks. Not death ticks. Go this way. Now here we start seeing some of that extended reach of Gahoon beyond just these pustules of blood and rot growing on everything in the form of these grotesque horrors which are something that potentially existed before and was twisted by Gahoon or something that is kind of exists and is born directly of his influence. disgusting it's his we also fight them in the in the fight I think some of them pop out of the floor and you can just kind of see like the decay and kind of just falling apart of the ground around and underneath old deer it doesn't seem like it was very well and thought out and designed some other very interesting stuff that we find down here is remnants of uh, of troll architecture actually almost um Ruins of Zalvor, almost kind of like on the border of, you know, is this something that fell down here or is this what something that was built on top of that used to be a thing that maybe is kind of forgotten, kind of not really much appreciated anymore. Definitely built on top of. The Titans tend to do that. What manner of creature is this? It must not be allowed to reach the surface. Destroy it now! So these guys seemingly all sacrifice themselves to imbue Spore Collar Zancha with the essence of rot, turning it into this rotting, undead monstrosity. And I'm pretty sure the fungus is even growing in and out of his eyes. <clears throat> Spore collar Zancha. Yeah, it looks like it's coming out of his eyes. Twisted by Gahoon's corruption, Zancha's only remaining desire is to spread the plague festering within his animated corpse. So Gahoon and anything touched by it is driven by an innate desire to just spread corruption and suffering. That's fucked up. Rot must spread. Look at it spreading these. Infectious mushrooms. More troll architecture down here on the ground. Where this like layer of rot has like grown over it. Spores. Everything decays. Indeed, even the very land around us. I have never seen this form of corruption before. If this spreads to the surface, we will not be able to contain it. Kind of weird that Talanji says that she's never seen this corruption before, considering that I thought that was like the whole reason why we came here. See how this thing almost looks like it's becoming maybe even like an organic being of its, of like a living being? That's f***ing scary. I believe there's a power of the relation to the power of decay in the shrooms here. Galakron and the Bleeding Hollow, the nuances of decay and spreading and consuming. Yeah, I think that thematically there definitely is some underlying shit going on here. I mean, look at, look also at this. 
If I'm not mistaken, this seal is the same one that is uh, at the necropolis where Buonsomdi is found. And so Buonsomdi himself could also be an example of something implemented post-original, origin like, kind of blood troll level, like Muzela level shit. That gong is Muzela's chest plate? Ah, it's Muzala. It predates even Buonsomdi. Ah, that's what I have to have it backwards. So the OG, yeah, yeah, the OG for Muzala. Is Gahoon the missing link between Spore Mounds and Old Gods? Perhaps. Because really all Spore Mounds were going to do is spread and corrupt and consume as well. And now down here, we find Titan Keeper Hezrol being affected by this faceless corruptor. Which is also a different kind of looking faceless one. It's interesting to me how thematically all of these beings who are bound to Gahoon share his... Uh, is like visual, like gray and red appearance. And they're like unique in that regard. He also has orange glowing eyes. Growth into rot into void, I guess. Aberration. They are of his flesh, yeah. And who is known for promoting the ideals of growth? ANR. It's fucking. It's ANR. Could be he dreamt them out, but why tentacles? Because roots. Massive breach detected. I think tentacles are like roots. Massive breach detected. Yeah, no shit, Ezreal. You got captured while trying to find mother in a pool of Gahoon's rot. And look at him using light. Gahoon containment failing. Mother not responding. And we're very, very close to the edge of Uldir at this point. We're like really approaching it. I'm gonna pull all this stuff so I can get Keeper Hezreal's dialogue. And see how they summon? They are themselves not void, but they summon void tentacles. You see that? It's interesting how they make those distinctions, you know? How the entity itself is not of, of, of like void energy. This used to be a large building, by the way. This was like a very large building but they channel the void. It's like their rot, their decay, is like calling the entropy of a void to reality. Red gems on their, on their chained belts, by the way. Titan Keeper Hasrell moves up. You have these mysterious spores. This must be for like some kind of world quest or something. I don't really know what that's for. People often don't come over here, so I'm gonna go check this out over here. Looks like maybe some form of altar or statue or fountain. More coffins. But that potentially the insignia of Muzela on them, Muzala. Maybe even being profane to create some of these creatures we see here. And we see, like a vent airing it's it's like let me put it this way chat uldir is like a hyper think about uldir as like a a professional laboratory where everything is so pristine and what's the word what's the sterile sterilized that they even have eight an hvac system and probably a multiple layered hvac system to pump the spores out but they look at what they look where they put it. Look at where it goes. It just goes into the earth. Old Deer is designed with an with a fucking ventilation system that just expels its waste into the earth. That's why it's like this. Like what the fuck? We can always reoriginate the outside. And look at how similar these things start to appear to, like, the Nightmare as well. With the dark red and the glow and kind of the white fading to gray and soon fading to black. Like, these things certainly must be related. Planetary infection imminent. Yeah, no shit. Planetary infection imminent is f***ing right. Planet's already infected, Keeper Hezreal. 
Maybe just not by Gahoon. It spits void. Specimen detected. Containment priority one. It's a specimen. So this thing is something that's been f***ing uh, experimented on. A vir virulent specimen. So this thing is, is spreads like a viral infection. Into ruins descent we go. I want to point out those right there. These things on the wall. They appear to be Titan machinery. And they, they appear to have similar runes on them as to what's on the seat of the Pantheon. I'm very curious about this machinery down here. What... Like, it also reminds me a little bit of Uldum, with like the tubes with the blue energy going through it. And the clockwork mechanisms kind of all over the place. This is an elevator, by the way. This is, this is, if we were to take this up there, I believe it's Talak is right above us up there. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think the raid is now that we've cleared this area out, I think... What is it? We, we like, open the elevator, we go down it fighting Talok, and then do we go through, like, one of these doors? I can't really remember how it, how it flows. But in this room, Ruins Descent. God for... What, what is the name of this? Gahoon's Rot in its purest form. The Unbound Abomination. Its only purpose is to infect all life. That's all, that's all it's for. So this thing's sole purpose is to infect all life on the planet with a curse of undeath that would prevent everything from having a natural mortal death. If the, if Gahoon got out and if this thing got out, basically the whole world would turn into a monstrous abomination of rot and everything would fucking suffer, probably eternally, as undead. That's fucking horrific. Scourge V2, yeah. Honestly, this is, I don't know if people like, are, I connect it that way, yes. This is a, this is Titan Mage made Scourge, chat. You guys see that, right? You guys see that, right? This is Titan made Scourge. Gahoon is like the Lich King. And all of the things bound to it are like the Scourge. They created their own plague of undeath. You guys want to know something that's funny about that? If you think about what Uldir is, and we're going to get into this, as a facility to house the most dangerous, virulent specimens, all known diseases in the cosmos are stored in Uldir. Did you guys know that? You know what else has a uh, has that? The House of Plagues in the Shadowlands was like that until it was utterly destroyed. Hmm. I wonder if there's any similarities between Uldir being the Titan's workshop for virulent specimens and plagues and the Eternal's workshop that is the House of Plagues in the Shadowlands. What if there's any connection there? Is it mere to Titan's love to mix elements and forces, order with anything, life with everything? It, it always seems to fail fall with fail with death and decay. It's because they're denying, they're only, they're only adhering to half of what's occurring. And they're not really recognizing, it seems, the, the correlations and connections between forces. So, it seems as though the Titans believe that they can just use light, order, and life to accomplish their goals. But they don't understand, potentially, that in order to accomplish, for those things to, to live harmoniously and to live in peace and not eternal suffering, they need to have their counterparts. The light is just eternal suffering without the void and, and vice versa. Death is just eternal suffering without life and vice versa. Like, if you live forever, you're basically in a prison. If you die and you're stuck in an eternity, you're basically in a prison. If, you know, you are become a demon and now you're bound to the Legion as an immortal demon, you're basically in a prison. If you become a Titan Forge and turn into stone and now you're a stone man, you're basically in a prison. You know, you can't, you can't neglect and, and just disregard the other half of these equations that make harmony you know it's it's divisive and destructive it causes suffering like you can't pick any of the one forces and be like that's the one that we use it just it doesn't work you end up fucking things over so we're gonna fight this thing Devour, 
And this thing is obviously meant to remind you of the big, uh... Scourge Giants. Cleansing area. I don't know what they're called. Patchwork Giants or whatever? This thing is clearly supposed to remind you of one of these. An abomination? It's very, in my opinion, it's a flesh giant. It's very, it's very... Cleansing area. Oh yeah, the second boss of Everbloom. Area. Yep. Yep. Uh, yes. Ancient protectors. Look at this. Same type of concept, except it's life. It's spirit energy that's causing this. Spirit Cleansing energy area. causes this thing to become a thing. Spirit and decay are not that different, chat. They go together. That's why the Emerald Nightmare seeps into the Emerald Dream in the way that it does, because they're bound together. Can't separate spirit Cleansing and decay. Area. For those who don't know, orcs literally were turned into flesh orcs from Magnaron because the spirit of life energy that was inundated within the spore mounds came out as spores and infected these stone creatures created by Agrimar, and it turned them into flesh. Orcs are made out of plant matter flesh, chat. They're made by a, a derivative of spirit because the spirit energy somehow caused them to turn into this. So decay could potentially accomplish the exact same thing because you gotta remember that things, magics, it doesn't always matter exactly what magic is being used to cause the influence. Necromancy is necromancy, whether it's death magic or it's light magic, it doesn't matter. The reanimation of a corpse is necromancy. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which way you spin it, right? So when you, when you start looking at things through that lens and start recognizing that magics are capable of being wielded, magical, how do I put this? Isn't it funny to you guys how magics are essentially like interchangeable with one another? Like they can all make portals, they can all heal you. They can all do damage. They can all show you the future. They all have those capabilities. It's because, it's because I think to a degree, magic is just sourced from soul essence. The Titan bought us time. She thinks Titan Keeper has rolls of Titan. We must gather our forces and stop the rot at its source. Yes, we should. So magics are basically like a blank slate, in my opinion. You can have them like fell as magic as a whole disordered. Basically, cosmic affinities pulling on magic crammed together. So you end up with this magic that's like unstable because it's this cosmically a lot like cosmically um, aligned magic that's like all forced into a singular destructive magic. Okay, whereas arcane is like magic in general being divided, being pulled on with very specific aspects. And I think that's how we get things like fire and ice out of our arcane spells. Light is pulling on like the faith and hope of 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 the of the of the soul. Like void is pulling on the despair and pain. You know, they're all basically pulling magics are basically just manifestations of cosmic forces pulling on energy. The same way that anima works in the Shadowlands. When you go to the Shadowlands, all the anima looks the same when you're coming into Oribos, right? It's all white spiritual anima or whatever, souls or whatever. But it's the methods by which that anima is extracted and the influence of the realms in the Shadowlands upon anima that determine its appearance. Now, does that mean that the anima in Ardenweald is different than the anima in Revendreth? No, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's that different because at its core, they're the same fucking substance. It's about how those, those realms influence those forces. And I think that's all magic is in World of Warcraft. It's all a blank slate. It's just all magical soul energy that different cosmic forces are pulling on in different ways to give rise to magics in different forms, but they're all the same shit. That's why harmony between different magical um, 
manifestations like, let's say, Illyria Windrunner and Turalyon are important because it helps us to recognize that our the things that we think make us so different is not, they're not actually that different. What we often believe is dividing us is actually the thing we all have in common, which is a huge theme in World of Warcraft. <laughs> so I, I like to talk about the, the blood magics and the, the light transfusion. That's why these things are interchangeable because at the core, they're not a different substance. They're just being manipulated in different ways. So have you done or are you gonna do Old Deer? Uh, well, I've done Old Deer in the past, but I, I haven't done it today. What I would like to do in order to deliver the best content to you guys is I would like to have the opportunity now that I've gone through Atal Dazar, King's Rest, and Underrot, I would like the opportunity to refresh myself on Uldir. I would like to read up on the lore and come back to it on um, Tuesday of next week. I think that would be a fun day to do it um, if we don't get a patch. And even if we do, maybe we make time for it anyway. Um, Uldir is going to take me a long time. Um, it's We're going to probably be in Uldir for like three or four hours. So um, look forward to it. Uh, I, I, I really think that you guys will enjoy it, but I don't think... Um, we're going to have the time for that today, uh, as much as I would like to. Um, would you ever do a lore tour of the Black Temple? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm considering just doing every instance of the entire game. People seem to really enjoy this. I mean, this is the first time that I've ever done like a series. I don't know if you guys realize that, but I've never done a series <laughs> on my YouTube channel before, ever. And even if the series only includes me hitting key, um, you know, Titan facilities and... Uh, Nihilotha and uh, uh, the Eternal Palace or Antorus the Burning Throne. Like, you know, do I need to do Molten Core? Probably not, <laughs> you know? Molten Core is pretty straightforward. Do you guys really need an explanation of that? No. But would Upper Black Rock Spire be a hell of a lore tour? Fuck yes, it would. Fuck yes, it would. Getting to go through the lore of Dagrin, Tharasin, and the whole, the whole, everything pertaining to the Dwarven lore? Holy shit. I don't think you guys understand how much lore there is available just for that one race that we could just blow open. Like, and that leads right into the War Within. So, I'm just saying, UBRS, Blackrock Depths, those types of places, dude, those would be fire lore tours. 